<sighs> Holy shit balls, eh? G'day everyone, welcome back to the Eagles Corner for a much happier version of this uh, of this style of content. The Eagles have just somehow, somehow beaten the Bulldogs at Marvel Stadium, absolutely stunned them in a game that's reminiscent of that 2009 game, I'll never forget. The Eagles were similarly bottom the ladder and uh, kicked like nine of the first 10 goals against the Bulldogs who were top four back in 09 and hang on for a five point victory. And this game had similarities to that, but to be honest, it was way more shocking. For me personally, uh, I am still so jet lagged from Canada, but I have forced myself to wake up at four, slept until 4.30, I've had about two hours sleep. I'm not doing well. So not for the first time this year, I have woken up and checked the football score. It's quarter time and we're up 33 to 7 and I've just raced to get my laptop and start watching from that point. I've subsequently watched back the first quarter um, but what a unexpected result to say the least. Oh my god, like I was looking at the lineup prior to this game and the Western Bulldogs have uh, powerhouse midfield, let's be honest. And yes, Liberatore is missing from this lineup, but comparatively, you look at, you know, obviously we've got some injuries, but the starting midfield for West Coast was something like Tim Kelly, Andrew Gaff, Jaden Hunt, Luke Edwards, Elijah Hewitt, uh, Chesser, Petrevsky seat runs through it. I guess Yo did spend a bit of time in there, but on paper, you know, excluding Yo, I just thought, wow, that midfield is going to get torched and you know what the Eagles won the clearances we beat the Western Bulldogs in clearances today we've seen at various times this year pretty few and far between where the senior players just lift and play out of their skins and were unreal Tim Kelly played one of his best games for the club he was sensational 13 touches and a goal I think at quarter time not sure if it was a goal but he had 13 touches Elliot Yo was winning clearances in a dominant fashion as well both of them Obviously, the Bulldogs sort of pegged back the margin. It's a couple of goals at halftime. I can't remember if we're in front at three-quarter time. If we are, it's very, very narrowly. And at that point, you can see the game going in a predictable manner. You know, the young team that's played out of their skins and, to be honest, burnt a lot of opportunities as well. We missed some easy shots in front of goal. We burned some really good inside 50s we had. I really thought we were going to tire out. But at the 15-minute mark of the last quarter, Jamie Cripps slots his third or fourth goal. And from that point, I was like, my God, I, these guys actually look like they're going to win. And that's from a pet pessimistic fan who can sort of see losses coming. I've seen it in, you know, the Essendon game, for instance, you know, the, the loss coming was predictable. But when Cripps slotted that goal from long range, I just thought, wow, no, I think the Eagles have actually been the better team for almost this entire game and don't look like running out of steam and will probably win this. And from that point, yep, the Bulldogs got, you know, one or two goals back, but they didn't really look like taking that game from us if you're looking at it from a neutral perspective. And that's with one of the more, or one of the many champion performances Bontempelli has put in. I was watching this guy today and I was thinking, this guy is the best player in the comp. I know Dacos has had a wonderful year, you know, as have so many others, and I think Bont has actually been really consistent this year, but also his top level, when he's on form, and he often is in form, he is unstoppable. And to be honest, West Coast didn't have an answer for him today. And the fact that we managed to pull off a seven-point win is a massive testimony to the team football we played and also a little bit of an indictment on the rest of the Western Bulldogs, who obviously this season's kind of in tatters now. A lot of talk about, like, the, the next sacked coach who was Adam Simpson was the flavor of the week last week and now you know from the media talking through this game the commentators seem to suggest now Beveridge might be the next man to go I don't know I'm not really going to comment on that but it does appear that making finals seems very unlikely for them now I think specifically they've got to beat Geelong and GMHBA and they've got to hope Carlton beat GWS so there is a decent chance but at the same time this should have been a lock for the dogs a lot of this win was engineered off the back of uh, the senior players playing well Jamie Cripps probably best on ground with five goals probably in career best form. Tim Kelly, like I said, one of his better games for the club, maybe not his best. Oscar Rowling was huge. He had three goals, 16 touches or whatever, 17 touches. There was a lot to like and it feels good to win and that's our best win well, since round four against Collingwood last year. Obviously, there is a big Harley Reed shaped elephant in the room now we will talk about that because it is a very relevant conversation about this game so there's a lot of Eagles fans who had a lot of mixed emotions or well, actually not even mixed emotions there are people online right now particularly on Big Footy losing their shit having the biggest melts because West Coast now no longer hold peak one and are unlikely to hold pick one again at the end of the year. And I kind of understand the frustration I must admit myself watching that game as we were kicking goals I was thinking geez like do I really want us to win here? For me personally, I think at the core of it, I'm still such a big Eagles fan that 
it's hard not to feel excited when we're playing well and kicking goals. And we were playing really well. It was the best four quarter effort we've put in all year. The intensity was there. We made a lot of skill errors, but we didn't go into our shells when those mistakes uh, were capitalized on by the Bulldogs. You know, we, it was just a really good performance. It's hard not to feel good about that. But at the same time, this is having massive implications on the draft in particular. And this is obviously an important draft for the Eagles. It's our worst season in history. Technically, we have exceeded last year with an extra win, but let's be real, this season has been worse. There is a frustration that will come away with this and not have the generational talent that is Harley Reid. That is almost certain to happen now. So what it relies on now is us not beating Adelaide in the farewell game. For non-Eagles fans, the farewell game is Hearn and Shuey. We'd have to not beat them and North Melbourne would have to beat Gold Coast in Tasmania, which is possible and less shocking than the Eagles beating the Dogs at Marvel, but remains very unlikely. There's been a few people, you know, Eagles fans who have suggested, okay, so we won't get Harley Reid, we may get Daniel Curtin. Well, that's probably not going to happen either. There's obviously still so much up in the air regarding North Melbourne's um, what is now pick one, whether they get band one compensation for Ben Mackay and band one would mean a pick after their first pick. I think this is the most likely outcome. So I do think North Melbourne probably have picks one and two right at this stage. And I don't know who they're going to take with pick two. I think we can safely assume that North Melbourne in their position would take Harley Reid with pick one. Who's pick two? Well, I don't really know, but there is a bit of grapevine information suggesting that North have really locked into Daniel Curtin. So Curtin coming to West Coast is probably less likely than likely at this stage. So when you also factor in that Jed Walters is going to attract a bid probably in those first two to three picks, then West Coast suddenly go from having pick one to pick four. And that's before you even consider the priority pick situation. I don't think this will happen, but it is distinctly possible that North Melbourne get a start of first round priority pick as well for being wooden spooners three times in a row having back-to-back two win seasons assuming they don't beat Gold Coast there is a chance that happens which means North would hold picks one two and three in the draft Gold Coast would take Walter with four with the match bid and West Coast enter the draft at pick five that is a bit of a doomsday scenario but I'm just painting the picture for why there are a lot of Eagles fans out there with I won't even say they're conflicted about this result they are ropeable that we have lost pick one I'm not going to buy into that I don't feel that kind of emotion towards it of course you know I'd love to have pick one and hardly read and it's ironic that I have bad luck I feel I, I feel like it's bad luck I'm, particularly in this case it's bad luck where I just released a video saying I'm now convinced that Harley Reid will end up at West Coast and then we've gone and beaten the Bulldogs at Marvel that's just shit luck on my behalf but yeah obviously that video is a little bit redundant now um, as I'm getting comments on it as we speak I won't lie the prospect of Harley Reid and Elijah Hewitt playing together in the same team uh, as midfielder forwards was very tantalizing but I think we have to let go of that and once the emotion settles from this game we'll start to have to think about who we want to pick for because I think uh, it's probably going to be Dersmer or McKercha. Um, I need to think about that and I'll probably do a draft video this week because there's a, a lot happening. There's, a, there's an argument being made, you know, the, the, for culture reasons, we were better off winning that game and uh, obviously I don't want my team to tank. I've never wanted my team to tank. I just kind of wanted us to just kind of be consistently decent but not good enough to actually win games in a way you know you could argue that losing the derby by 100 points and then beating the dogs at marvel and missing out on pick one is the worst possible outcome and i understand the frustration about like people are saying that it's frustrating that we pick and choose when we want to play so for instance you know we couldn't get our shit together in the derby to show up and put in even a half respectable performance it wasn't a respectable performance but to then go do that the following week it shows we're capable so why have we been so consistently pathetic through large portions of this year only to then demonstrate that we have it right when we're about to secure pick one i can understand the frustration and the tension on behalf of eagles fans there but on the other hand you know it might seem like why now but it only takes one good performance in any other game this year let's say we'd come out in shock Fremantle in the derby we'd still have lost pick one so we're a little bit unlucky that north melbourne are terrible they are terrible sure they haven't been as pathetic throughout uh 2023 in terms of isolated game well i say isolated there were five 100 point losses this year so what i mean is their, their worst has not been as bad as ours but they have lost 20 games in a row beating them to the bottom of the ladder pick one and harley reed was a always going to be a tough ask i guess so yeah that's my thoughts on the game um you know I, I'm, I'm more happy than unhappy that's for sure and I now have to decide who I really want us to draft this year. And uh, I guess that's the time to start thinking about that is probably after we probably lose to Adelaide and North probably lose to Gold Coast. But very happy with the win. Uh, I guess another side point I'll make is that Zane True is the sub. 
very, very decent. Seven touches, kicked a goal. He's been good in the waffle. And he's been on the list, I think, three years now. And I'm starting to think this guy probably deserves a one-year extension. If that's, that's what he can produce, I think there's some AFL traits in there. So one-year extension for Zane True is the other comment that I'll make. But yeah, that's my thoughts on the game. Mixed emotions. Obviously, really happy to see my team win. I think it's the most stunning Eagles upset possibly ever, to be honest. Like, I know we beat Collingwood in round four last year, but that was only in round four. We didn't know how bad West Coast was going to get. So in terms of in-the-moment surprises against a team who had everything to play for, against the rampaging Bontempelli at the top of his game, to come away with four points on the back of potentially Jamie Cripps' best game ever, it's the most stunning Eagles result I can recall. So those are my thoughts. Let me know in the comments, uh, you know, both Eagles fans and, I guess, North Melbourne fans and neutrals, what do you think? Uh, North, who are you going to take with picks one and two? Uh, I'm not, I don't think North will end up with picks one two and three but i'd say one two and potentially pre-list riley sanders or they'll get an end of first round pick or something like that i think that's probably more reasonable but anyway that's my thoughts um i have to now edit this video grab a coffee and try and pull through because my jet lag is insane but look forward to more content coming out this week i did a podcast with Druzy yesterday probably gonna do a power ranking because i'm aware that my power rankings uploaded with no audio and it was like i was in canada at the time i couldn't do anything about it so i'll do another one for you final just the tips of the home and away season the game day squad video will be up and a fan Phantom draft this week at the very least so thanks very much for watching guys let me know in the comment section what you think below and uh subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thanks very much i'll see you in the next one